Hey everybody, it is Josh here, and I am currently controlling Vancouver. Uh, I am also uh, a Euroscope user. So today I will be explaining uh, basic ground and delivery operations. Uh, full disclaimer, this is adhering to the VATCAN policy. If you are in VAT USA, VAT uh, Europe, VAT New Zealand, Australia, whatever, uh, you may have. Uh, it might be a little bit different, uh, but uh, the general principles are the same. So right now, uh, I'm connected to Vancouver Ground, uh, so I'm controlling and I'm actually online right now. I have one aircraft on the ground, it is an Air Canada 777 on its, just uh, on its way to Honolulu. Uh, if you see here, uh, this is my departure list. It's also known as the flight strip. Uh, so this is where I update my basic information. So this is starting with delivery. So with delivery, your task is to give the aircraft in question IFR clearance to proceed to their destination. Now whenever you get uh, IFR clearance or uh, aircraft calls up for IR, I IFR clearance. This should be done actually before the aircraft calls up, uh, almost exactly when he files. Uh, you need to make sure altitudes are correct. Uh, is the one is a big thing. So he is flying west, and there's a little rhyme we do: is east is least, and west is best. So if you're flying west, you should be at even number altitudes. If you're flying east, you should be at odd number altitudes. Uh, so he's at 36,000, so that is an even number altitude, so that's okay. If he was at like 35 or 37,000, then we have to correct it. Uh, he has filed IFR, which is good. Uh, his aircraft code looks okay. His alternate looks okay. Uh, we don't really worry about departure, time on route, whatever. Um, he is IFR. Uh, if he were VFR, the standard rules for VFR is the same thing he says leaves west as best. But if you're a VFR aircraft, then you have to add 500 feet. And that can only go up to 18,000. That's where the flight levels start. Above 18,000 is IFR only. So if, say he was going, I don't know, say we were going from Vancouver to Victoria. Uh, technically, uh, west is best. So we'd file, I'd file 4,500. 4,000 is even plus the 500. So that's how flight levels work and alt cruising altitudes. Uh, another thing we need to do is assign him a squawk. I've already assigned him a squawk, so I won't click on the button. So you'll click the button, set squawk, and then uh, everything looks okay. So we're good there. Um, now in Vancouver, the standard uh, instrument departure is the Vancouver 1, which is climb, maintain, 7,000, fly runway heading. It's really not that hard, and pilots should have it on board. So what we do is uh, once we uh, validate the flight plan, and to get the flight plan you need to right click on the aircraft type by the way, pretty simple. Once you validate the flight plan you need to select him, give him a SID. So you go over here under SID and if there's a blank box there then we just click the blank box like I just did that one. And you click Vancouver 1. Plain and simple. Uh, and then you would select the runway. So we're using the 8s today, so 08 right is our uh, takeoff runway, and uh, 08 left is our landing runway. Uh, so once that is done, uh, this is something for Vancouver, I don't know if uh, other FIRs do it, or AFTCCs. Uh, we always set the temporary altitudes, that's the altitude set on the SID, so in this case it would be 7,000 feet. So I just set that. Um, and then once he calls up for clearance, so once the flight plan shows up, that will be looking like that, and the status bar will be empty. So once he is called up for clearance, and you and you uh, give him the clearance, and it's read back correct, you push that button to to acknowledge that he is cleared. Uh, if it's for if you're doing uh, sort of just by yourself, like if you're only on delivery or ground, and there's no one above you, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you have a tower or a uh, tower or terminal controller on, it's really helpful. So you would select that, then you select push. So once he calls up for taxi, I'll switch him to taxi. Once he call, once he uh, switches over to Unicom, because there's nobody above me right now. When he switches over to Unicom and takes off, I'll send him to departure. 
So we're going to keep them on push for now. And that is basically it for uh, clearance delivery. Um, the only real difference in clearance delivery between IFR and VFR, uh, it's actually a big difference, what am I saying? Uh, in VFR, uh, clearance delivery would only be called up by the pilot to get a squat code. Now, that is only for airports with Class Charlie airspace, Class Bravo, Bravo airspace. So basically, big airports or no Class Charlie, Class Charlie airspace. My goodness. Um, so big airports, so Vancouver, Toronto, um, New York, LAX. Airports with that kind with uh, that kind of traffic and Class Charlie airspace, they need to have a squat code. Uh, if it were going out of a small airport like I don't know St. John or um, like Casper, Wyoming, um, like uh, Castlegar, BC, like these smaller airports, he could just squawk standard VFR, which is one two zero zero, and that would be fine. Um, but when he calls up for clearance, all you need to do is give him the squawk code if you're on clearance delivery. If you're on ground, and it is, if say there's no clearance delivery and you're just doing ground, you would give him the squat code, the winds, the altimeter, and the taxi instructions. So say I had a VFR aircraft right here on uh, off of Delta Romeo, and he calls me up for taxi. I would say uh, Alpha Bravo Charlie, uh, squawk five one zero zero. Winds are 130 at 7, altimeter 3000, zero, zero, zero. taxi runway 08 right via Delta Hotel Lima, Lima 4, hold short 08 right, cross 13. Something simple like that, so you need to give him his squawk, the winds, the altimeter, and his taxi instructions all in one go. Uh, but that's only if you're on ground and there's no clearance delivery online. If you're, if clearance delivery is online, he'll already have a squat code, so all you need to say are the winds, the altimeter, and his taxi instructions. Which brings me into ground. Now, ground uh, has control of all the taxiways. Uh, be aware that ground does not have control of runways unless the tower controller gives access to the runways. So if I were to have a tower on right now, uh, nine times out of ten, ninety-nine percent of the time, the tower would let me have this runway to use as a taxiway. And it looks like the Air Canada might be pushing. Yes, no, maybe so, maybe not. Uh, when he does, you can hear some radio communications, actual radio communications. Um, but uh, more often than not, uh, ground or tower gives me this runway. Uh, at my disposal to do whatever. So I can taxi planes across it because uh, we don't use it ever. I've only seen it be used once. So that's that. Um, and then ground has control of all the taxiways. Note ground does not have control of the apron. So the apron is actually just at the pilot's discretion. So when you issue taxi instructions, it would be like runway zero, eight right, taxi apron at your discretion. Uh, Juliet Alpha, Juliet Lima, hold short zero eight right cross one three, stuff like that. Um, and it looks like the air can is pushing, so we'll wait. And uh, when he calls up, we'll give him some taxi instructions, so you can hear what taxi instructions actually sound like. Um, in Canada, we usually give the altimeter uh, along with taxi instructions, just a little thing that we do. Um, actually. Yeah, we usually give the altimeter. Um, another thing to know about controlling ground is uh, sequencing. Sequencing is actually pretty important uh, when it comes to ground because uh, when it comes to tower, they're trying to min maintain minimum separation. So say you have a Cessna 172 and you have a 740, say you have a Cessna 172 on Delta Romeo and a 747 coming down Delta. Let the seven let the seven forty seven halt or hold position and then let the Cessna one seventy two go. Because it much easier for sequencing uh for tower to get the uh uh for the wake turbulence category out. Uh because uh, I think it's minimum two minutes separation between a light and heavy. So uh that saves two minutes. Um 
Other than that, ground uh, is basically issuing taxi instructions and uh, making sure planes don't run into each other on the ground and sequencing. Those are really the only three things uh, about ground that are that need to be known. Um, uh, so it's really not too difficult. It's a great gateway. To get your feet wet in controlling, um, and then tower is the next step up. So, but tower is a little more interesting, so to speak. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, and uh, hopefully uh, this helped you out with uh, explaining some ground and tower, or sorry, ground and delivery concepts, and uh, hope to see you controlling in the future. Thank you very much for tuning in.